Minasan, konnichiwa, Zamoride Engineer Des. In uh, our transportation engineering, we have uh, several modes of transportation. We have uh, roads and highways, we have rail, we have uh, air, we have water. And uh, actually, we will uh, go to the details of this. But uh, in this video, let us um, concern ourselves specifically for the uh, transportation using railroads, what we call rail uh, road engineering. So railroad engineering is uh, a type of uh, or the mode of transportation wherein we move goods and people using trains. So these types are also having uh, various uh, technology right now from the very rough, or very raw uh, wagon system and then the uh, conventional uh, train with the what uh, diesel engine or coal powered trains uh, up to the more more uh, current light trains and uh, even we have the bullet trains we have the bullet trains right now so there are countries with uh, several bullet trains like i personally use bullet trains to travel in japan when i was uh, there so it's very comfortable as uh, as I can say from my own experience, and fast, convenient, very efficient. Train system in Japan is very efficient and uh, actually necessary. Imagine the uh, economy of Japan will stop if, uh, for example, all the trains will stop for uh, one week. The economy will stop. Okay, there will be panic all around because they are a necessity. Okay. So, let us uh, therefore introduce and remind everybody that the main purpose of transportation is to move people in goods from one point to another. And in our current uh, system, we have to ask further question like, is our solution adequate in moving people and goods from place to place? Is it adequate, efficient? Does it provide basic intrinsic value? Does it provide value added? Okay. value added meaning uh, aside from the goods and services being transported from place to place you can feel other values of the transportation and itself for example comfort relaxation those are value added you feel safe you feel uh, comfort safe and satisfaction you feel relaxed so those are value added okay so that is the not the main uh, purpose of uh, transportation but uh, that's why it is called value added and thus our solution is our for economic development When I go back to the train system in Japan, it is 
almost. Eh, sorry. It's, uh, no way Japan will move its economy without rail transport system. Therefore, uh, if uh, your solution is to design and uh, implement or strap uh, transport system from one section to another in order to provide better adequacy okay so because transportation system will become what for example it will become obsolete for example it will become inadequate after uh, for example five years it is adequate right now but uh, in five years it may not be adequate why because there are so many people population added each and every year and uh, if the population adds, it will cause uh, heavy traffic, heavier and heavier traffic each year. So heavier and heavier traffic on the roads if there is no corresponding increase in rail transportation solution. So adequacy, efficiency, efficient is being utilized all the time. And not only utilized all the time, uh, Japanese uh, rail transportation system is not only efficient but effective. Effective because it can move you from place to place in a definite period of time. If you ride a train, if you board a train in one town, you will definitely know what time you will arrive on your destination. There is a table there in the uh, train station. What time you board the train and what time you will arrive at the destination. So departure and arrival time are there. And not only they are uh, shown on the uh, boards, on the billboards, they are really happening in practice. They are really happening in practice. And actually, if uh, they don't happen, the uh, transport operator will uh, have to be, they will be obliged to say sorry, to say their apologies to the public and explain. Just a matter of just a matter of 30 seconds. 30 seconds late from their uh, schedule, they will be there on the press. They will have a press conference and uh, will uh, say their apology and explain. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. That is what? That is acceptable in most culture, but in Japanese culture, that is the limit. It's the limit of being late per second. Actually, the limit of uh, late, uh, as I experienced it in Japan, is about three to three minutes to five minutes. That is the limit. But uh, since they are the one who is giving the service, the operators themselves specify 30 seconds. They are only the one who specifies. There is no standards around the world to say or there is no rule around the world. Who will say that train late time is 30 seconds? There is no, there is none. There is no, but they, they uh, demand it on themselves. 
for their benefits of their clients. Not their own benefits, not the operator's benefits. They demand it on themselves for the benefit of the riding public. 30 seconds. So, for example, uh, uh, currently, now is 4 uh, p.m. and 3 minutes. 3 minutes past 4 p.m. For example, a board, a train in uh, Manila. And then I will locate the table. What time uh, will I arrive in, for example, Montilupa? For example, 4 p.m. 18 minutes. Okay. That that uh, table must be true. So 4 p.m. 18 minutes, 30 seconds is the maximum. It is okay if uh, we arrive there earlier, but you can definitely say to your uh, boss or to your client that I will arrive there at that uh, time. I will arrive there. So their culture is so efficient and effective at the same time. Efficiency means the trains are almost all there 24/7. That is uh, what we mean by efficiency. Now, when the there are when there are passengers, the trains are running. That means efficient. We can or we can what move all the goods and people at any given time. That is efficiency. It is not efficient if we are having a what, downtime. There are, uh, for example, rush hours wherein there are so many people going to work or going back home. And then suddenly one or two of our uh, equipment back down. Okay, so what will happen? It needs repair. Repair how, how long? Seven hours, eight hours, two days. So that is not efficient. So efficiency and effectivity in this regard are uh, different things. So effective because you can actually determine what time you will arrive at the destination. Okay? Early modes of transportation, for example, in the United States, because uh, U.S. is one of the, or the number one economy in the world. So let us uh, look how they develop their uh, transportation system. Initially, they utilize waterways. Okay, using waterways to transport. Okay, so boats and other uh, water uh, equipment. Okay. Then uh, crude roads. Crude roads uh, meaning they just flatten the soil. They just flatten the soil. There is no addition of concrete or any other. They just flatten the roads in order for, for example, the farm equipment to be carried by, for example, horse, horses, and other uh, farm animals, cow, okay, bull. Okay, so in your, uh, in your picture right now, you can see, a uh, past looking uh, equipment there, but it is being carried by two horses. Okay, 
So these are the early parts of crude roads. This is what in uh, Orlando, Florida. Oh, actually, it is not a bus on the road, but it is a rail, huh? rail station, rail station. It's a rail. There is a rail in this. Uh, so, of course, uh, other uh, carriage, other carriage can uh, utilize this road because it is uh, big, but there is a section in the center, as you can see in the picture. Uh, rail for the wheel of the wheels of the bus looking carriage. Okay. This might be the uh, old type of buses in the uh, ancient days. So, as you can see, it's a very small portion of the center with rails, but it is being carried. The uh, carriage is being carried by horse. In fact, uh, we have two horses here. Okay. So after which uh, they improved their uh, rivers and canals. Canals, uh, they have to construct canals and connect the rivers so that they can utilize more using water transportation. Using boats, so on. And then uh, railroads came 1830. So 1830, so nine years from now, okay, or uh, eight years from now, eight years from now, this year is uh, 2022, eight years from now, that would be what, 200, 200 years, that would be 200 years of using the um, railroad system. <laughs> okay, so in uh, 2030, we will have the 200th anniversary of using the railroad system. And after which, uh, they have what? They have the roads, meaning they don't just plot in the, the soil. <laughs> uh, they uh, use, for example, sand and gravel in order to add to the clay, clay type of road. Usually clay type of roads will become what? Uh, problematic when uh, when they are in rainy, rainy season. Okay, so it will become problematic to wield carriers. Okay, so they uh, put those with the roads in order to avoid that. They use uh, sand and gravel to, to prevent during uh, rainy season the uh, problems encountered on using crude roads for which uh, the roads are mostly uh, clay, loomy. Okay, so that's what they meant by better roads. Trucks, automobiles are now being started about 1920s. So we have now the uh, motorized type of uh, transportation, 1920s. So 1920s, about what? About uh, 90 years from 1830 from the start of railroad system, about 90 years, 1920, okay? And uh, today, that is uh, 1920, is, uh, more than 100, 102 years. So 102 years ago, they started automobiles in United States and uh, how about air transportation? About 1950s. 1950s is about 72 years 
72 years old. Okay, air, air passengers. There are already airplanes at the time. In fact, uh, in World War II, there are several uh, air, air uh, fighting okay, between uh, the warring countries, okay? for example, Japan, Europe, and US. So there are already helicopters, and airplanes, and um, air transport system, but not jet for, but for the general public or the passengers at use. They are uh, mostly for uh, military use. Okay? So 1950s. It is uh, opening now for passengers, general public. So interstates using trucks, automobiles, not only uh, within the town, within the uh, province, but as far as other states, meaning uh, if you can imagine, one state in the United States is uh, actually more uh, equivalent to one country. So United States, if uh, they say they have what, 50 states, they are what, conglomeration of, United States is a conglomeration of uh, 50 countries, if they say they are 50. So 50 states, 50 countries, they they unite. That's why they say United countries rather than saying United States, they say United States. So each state is a country. So United countries, United States. So there are 50 of them. So traveling from one country to another country is now uh, being uh, offered through automobiles and trucks. So that is 1960s. Okay, then the boom of railroad system, year 2000. Okay, year 2000. Actually, this is United States. Uh, I think uh, the typical transport system in Japan is a little bit different. The railroad system in Japan started early and I mean, the boom, the booming of railroad transportation, transport system is already year uh, 2000, there are already bullet trains in Japan, <laughs> not only railroad system, not only railroad system, but bullet trains. There are only bullet trains. Bullet trains meaning they are high speed. Okay. If you ride a bullet train, it uh, can go maximum speed of uh, 300, 350 uh, like that. Around, around that speed. That is 350 kilometers per hour. And you see, you say 100 kilometers per hour using highways, using roads is uh, actually the usual maximum in our country, right? Maximum speed, usual maximum in our country. There are 120, but the usual maximum in our country is 100, even 80, 80 to uh, 120. You can see on the uh, signboard, the road signs, about 200 kilometers per hour. But bullet train, 350. So, for example, if you can imagine, if you are from, from Baguio and you want to go to Bicol, the, the farthest, farthest part of Baguio and to the farthest part of Bicol, it will, it will only cost you two hours. Imagine that. Imagine that part is part of Baguio going to the part is part of Bicol. 
it will only cost you two hours if you ride bullet train. Okay. So that's why when I ride bullet train from uh, Yokohama to Nagoya, it only cost me 40 minutes. Yokohama City to Nagoya City. Only 40 minutes. And that is about what? About uh, Metro Manila to Bicol. About Metro Manila to Bicol. Or uh, Metro Manila to Baguio. That is about the distance. Okay, so, it's very what? Convenient. So... This is true for what? United States. What about now? What are the current modes of transportation? So in United States, they have what? Waterways with what? Using, implementing uh, high-tech uh, equipments and carriage like this one. Uh, very efficient. Uh, movement of goods. Look at this waterways. Very efficient. Space saving. Space efficient. Efficiency is uh, for time and space. No? So either way we can say efficient. So And uh, we can say that it is also effective because it can really move it from uh, one place to another. Very seldom, very few accidents, very few troubles happen. Okay? There are very few ships uh, sunk per year. There are very limited number of ships sunk per year. Okay, so, how about airways? We have several types of uh, airplane makers, Boeing and uh, I think Boeing is the main one, but there are several types. There are several makers. There are makers from Europe, okay, from uh, I think France, huh? France. So there are uh, about four uh, players in uh, airways transportation. They are the makers, and uh, most countries will just what, buy from them. So even if, uh, for example, even if uh, you travel with, you know, with, uh, for example, Bangladesh. Uh, Air. If you travel by Bangladesh Air, there's no problem because uh, their airplanes are made from the same maker. Okay? It is not their own technology. They just bought the planes. For example, for example they will just what, buy the Bangladesh Airlines will just buy from the makers. Doesn't matter which uh, country you uh, actually uh, ride or uh, work. And uh, actually you can pick uh, the uh, the cheapest fare. So the cheapest fare, for example, Pakistan, Bangla, uh, like that. No? So I travel, ride, board those planes. Uh, I know that they have the same maker, but of course the the service is uh, very different because I I can compare I had an experience of course uh, PAL uh, Pakistan uh, uh, different airlines in uh, Singapore. But uh, Japan Airlines, 
So I can compare that one of the best quality service is Jap Japanese, but one of the best pilot. There are so plenty of pilots, best pilots are uh, from our country. Okay. Okay, so that, that is my experience. Uh, other people may have uh, other experiences, but uh, in my limited uh, travel history, those are my observation, personal observation. I really, I really observe how those pilots take off and um, get down on the on the uh, air, airport. Okay, so I really observe how uh, how my body reacts to the uh, and also I'm served outside the window so right now the uh, airways transportation is very much uh, high technology how about highway trucks using trucks now our uh, roads and highways are being constructed and uh, specified to be able to carry the weight of trucks. There are standard weight for trucks, different types of trucks. So if uh, these roads can carry those heavy loads, therefore it is uh, even more possible for these roads to carry small vehicles like uh, motorcycles like cars so uh, but uh, not all the roads are made to carry to handle truck loads uh, only those main highways are able to carry those the uh, link roads the uh, Parangay roads, the municipal roads, mostly would not be able to do it. They are just for what? The general uh, and smaller loads. So, therefore, as you can see, there are several, even, even roads and highways, there are several types. Because roads and highways have different capacity. They have different capacity. There are different types of roads, but on the surface, you you see they are all the same. For example, concrete, asphalt, they are all the same on the surface, but underneath there are differences. Okay, the roads that uh, do not have steel reinforcement, there are uh, road layers that are uh, more than the others. Sometimes there are three layers, others are four layers, five layers. So there are different types. But uh, of course, roads and highways are the most reliable uh, type of transportation. How about pipelines? Pipelines cannot, uh, of course, transport uh, human beings. Only the what? Mostly the uh, liquid products, liquid goods, water, oil, different um, uh, gases, also gases can be transported. So liquid and gas, what we call fluid, fluid could be easily transported using pipelines rather than uh, using uh, trucks carried from point to point. It's better to use what pipelines. So there are systems that uh, do that, and also right now there are uh, interstate or intercountry, even intercountry in other uh, uh, part of the world, like in Middle East and Europe. There are intercountry pipelines, and they are now doing this in what Mexico, U.S., and Canada. 
So there are things for having inter uh, country pipelines. I think I think uh, the the last project is from or uh, rehabilitation of Canada US uh, pipelines. So those are the things in pipelines. They're being utilized and mostly to uh, to deliver fluids which involves what both gas and liquid. So how about conveyor belts? So we also have this type of transport that could uh, deliver mostly goods. As these are uh, almost similar with railways, but the difference that in railways we have the rails for the wheels of the trains. Okay, in the conveyor we have the conveying system which could also be motorized, but there is not necessarily they may they they can actually use what different types of conveying. If you say belt, okay, so you have to use belt type of conveying. There are uh, roller conveyors, there are belt conveyors, but here it is basically conveyor belts. So, so meaning there is a belt that will move, and uh, as the belt move here in the picture. It can carry the goods. You can attach or you can put goods above or beneath the belt, depending on the design, and then it will carry those goods from place to place. Okay, so those are the different modes of transportation right now in the United States. Railroads are America's first large corporations. Okay, there is no small corporation that will lay down uh, millions worth of what, railings, rails, for long distances. And this type of metals are actually engineered materials. They are not just any type of metal, okay. a special type of metal. If uh, these are very common type of metal, then maybe every month you will have to replace the metal because it will suffer what? Destruction, it will suffer wear and tear faster than uh, very special metal. These are very special metal. Okay. It will have a lifetime of uh, 50 years or more. That's how sturdy and strong these special metals are. That's why in our country, even though there are what uh, thief, they cannot they cannot cut even a small part of this metal because it's it, it is so hard. Okay. Okay. It is so hard. This is a special type of metal. You can, okay, you cannot uh, be able to cut this uh, using your what? Your uh, metal saw. Your metal saw will be damaged first before you can cut this. Okay, so that's why. Because if this is uh, an ordinary type of metal that could be cut by metal saw. Imagine all of our what uh, illegal settlers along the rails will uh, what will take out some piece for what for uh, for their own uh, buy and sell. For example, they. They will go to the what scrap shop, and they will uh, they will uh, 
sell it. They will sell it for what? Per, per kilo. I think. I think it is uh, being sold per kilo. They will just uh, go to any metal scrap, metal scrap shop, and then they will sell it per kilo. And imagine how many, how long. Is, is that the uh, railings already laid out? So for example, there's a piece of uh, this metal or how many kilograms? For example, 20 kilos, a piece, small piece of metal, 20 kilos. For example, uh, 20 pesos per kilo. No? 20 times 20, that is already 400 pesos. And they will do that. Per day, <laughs> they will cut 400 pesos per day. And then you notice all of these uh, rails will be wiped out in within a year, I think, within a year. But because it is a special matter, they, can, they cannot cut it out. Even if they use what? Acetylene cutter. Okay. They will what? they will use or they will spend more. If you will use a sitting cutter to cut 400 pesos, you will use, for example, 1,000 pesos of a sitting to cut 400 pesos. And that is not <laughs> productive, productive. <laughs> it's not a, that's why uh, nobody, almost nobody will be able to do it. Okay. Unless you are using acetylene that you also do not own. <laughs> you either uh, get those from uh, other people or just one. Okay. I use it for free, so that's another matter. But how can you do that? So that's why railroads are only laid out, implemented by uh, large corporations because of special type of method. Imagine how big, how heavy these uh, trains are. Imagine these trains cannot stop. At an instant, it cannot stop at an instant. It stop little by little, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down until it stop. It cannot stop abruptly because of what? Because of momentum and because of its uh, weight. The heavier we we are, the uh, greater our momentum. So the heavier, the greater the momentum. So since this is heavier, you cannot actually stop it by putting obstruction. You can stop it by another train, but uh, you cannot stop it by putting obstruction like, for example, a big truck, trailer, trailer truck. Trailer truck will be gone in a second if uh, the trains hit the trailer truck. Okay, so what more if uh, it bumps buses or cars, what more damage? Okay, so these are the problems why big corporation alone can do it because of their what, ability to produce those uh, capital, and buy those expensive materials. Heavily regulated until the 1970s and 1980s, US uh, railroads by privately owned. US railroads are uh, primarily freight, meaning uh, transporting goods rather than people. And uh, US rail passenger service is heavily subsidized by public when it is open to passenger transport. Okay. 
because of heavy demand for what capitalization because of so many train units you have to produce to manufacture and uh, also in the same way you have to add more and more what rails Why is uh, railroad by transport so important now and even more so in the future? Let's consider the alternative for inland transport. What are the alternatives? Truck, water, air, pipeline, conveyor belt. And the, these are being utilized right now. But as you can see, A pipeline and this is what bill okay water so barge so barges no air and truck what can you say about the railroad system As you can see, if you compare each and every one of these five to the railroad system, railroad system is, is better. One truck is actually one wagon of a sheer spray. Okay? So it depends upon how many wagon uh, units are there in one train depends upon the uh, operator okay for example if there are eight or ten units that is equivalent to ten trucks already and uh, they will transport so therefore train system can transport so much in so little time and uh, energy with so little energy but big what big capitalization we we need a big capital initial initial cost but the the uh, monthly monthly expense would be uh, smaller than uh, any of this for example maintenance of truck it's bigger than maintenance of railway. There is a big initial capital of laying down the metals, after which very small maintenance compared to any of these. For example, airplane, very big amount for uh, maintenance. Yes, yes, sorry. Okay. What about this? Also, all this very susceptible for trouble okay belt natural weather will uh, impose what so many troubles here using this what about pipelines also very efficient but pipelines very efficient but uh, compared to the volume could be transferred pipes have a maximum diameter <laughs> compared to the cut. And also pipes are only good for fluids. How about uh, transferring solid goods? Okay. Transferring solid goods, for example, furniture. How can you transport furniture using pipeline? It is not. So, uh, pipelines is uh, efficient for uh, transferring fluids. Belt is also good, but uh, very susceptible for trouble. Not uh, very much uh, problematic is the pipeline, but also needs uh, visual maintenance, taking for leakage and what trouble and uh, bulbs and control okay. and also cannot be used in 
solid and human being. So, the very important thing here is using railroad. Waterways, pros and cons, for example. Energy efficiency, low cost, low pollution, safety, capacity. But the disadvantage is speed, limited network. Limited network meaning there are limited ports and piers that can stop. Okay, so there are easier ways for rail transportation to create more uh, rail station rather than ports. Okay, so that's the that's the disadvantage. And it can travel very slowly. Slowly. Unlike, for example, bullet train. Travel very fast when you are transporting uh, human beings. But if you are transporting goods, you don't need to use uh, bullet train. That is very expensive. For example, you are transferring furniture. Uh, normal train is still about 10 times faster than, than using barge waterways. Okay. And the handling is uh, also a problem because from port you have to handle it, uh, then put it in the other mode of transport like trucks and deliver. So the handling is uh, very but, uh, problematic. Unlike uh, in train, trains have what? Station inside cities, inside towns. Those are the train station and then just meaning uh, train station are nearer to the users, to the clients, to the offices, to the, to the business centers rather than ports. Okay, so those are usually the case. Of course, there are some one or two exemptions. Okay. Highway truck, pros and cons. Speed, reliability, of course, uh, trucking is uh, faster than ordinary trains and uh, reliable and great network coverage. Disadvantage, energy efficiency. We need too much oil and gas, gasoline or energy. Land use, pollution cost, congestion, loss of traffic. Use of infrastructure, truck transport affects auto safety and congestion as well. Those are real problems. Accidents to cause what is infrastructure. Okay. It's rail car, no, rail car, it's rail car. Car is still enough. I, I thought it is called wagon. It is called rail car. It's rail car is approximately equal to three trucks. One rail car is approximately equal to three trucks mm -hmm. in terms of content. So it is uh, no way near the efficiency of rail transport. Airlines, advantage, speed, reliability, network coverage. Disadvantage, energy. More expensive fuel than trucks. This uh, type of fuel is uh, the most expensive type of fuel. Cost, limited volume, maintenance. Okay, and needs what? Needs uh, skilled uh, workforce, pilots, and attendants. How uh, about the train system? Driving a train is uh, easier than driving the truck. Okay. So those are differences. 
pipelines and conveyor belts. High volume conveyor belts can really transport solid. Uh, pipelines can transport but, uh, fluids. High volume continuous transport possible 24 7, no vehicles needed, low labor requirements. That's correct. But disadvantage highly constrained types of commodities. Okay, not all. For example, even though we say pipelines can transport fluid, it can only transport one type of fluid. For example, if you use uh, gasoline, it can only transport gasoline because the type of pipe is, is only allowable for, for gasoline. If you use, for example, alcohol, but it's not the same type of pipe, different type of pipe have to be used. If we use, for example, uh, compressed air, to transport compressed air, or water, different type of pipes have to be used. So, constraints, limited product flexibility. Okay, so those are the, also there is a maximum uh, gallons per minute or gallons per second. Okay. So those are some of the constraints. Uh, belt, here, belt for uh, solid product. Okay. Rail. Uniquely combines speed and energy efficiency. Okay. Imagine, you can see, not just imagine, you can see, see it, that the uh, trains can what, stack up all the goods in 100% of the space available. Uh, there are even uh, viral uh, videos of what uh, uh, passengers, human beings, being transported to some trains or LRT. They will what? They will uh, transport more than the hundred percent setting capacity, standing capacity, not just the standing capacity. They are uh, fully. Uh, but uh, side by side, not just the standing capacity. So very efficient. That is what we mean efficiency in terms of what the space. Environmentally friendly because uh, nowadays they are not using coal. Beforehand, uh, they are using coal, but nowadays they are using, for example, natural gas. And uh, in Japan, they are using mostly electric. So electric light rays. They are using electric. But before, they are using... So there are uh, old trays that still use diesel, and bunker oil, those are not environmental friendly. What we are talking right now is in the United States application, they probably stop the use of coal and bunker fuel and diesel. Or even if uh, this, there are instances that they still use those things, uh, they are minimized. So comparison basis with respect to, for example, truck. Okay. So rail is the principal means of economically moving large, heavy freight long distances, overland and even overload. <laughs> okay. Common goals and functions of the railroad industry, the movement of uh, freight and people in the most efficient manner possible. Okay, in the United States, uh, falling freight is 43% uh, plus, meaning uh, almost the, uh, the transfer of people 
it's about 57 but right is 43 so it is almost about 50 50 so it's about 50 -50. so it's very important part of uh function to move goods from one place to another characteristics we are fast reliable convenient economical fuel efficient environmentally friendly when you interest then passenger rail because of the demand okay so they started renewed interest uh, year 2000 they are very late when japan is already using bullet train they are just starting their passenger train for uh, people early regulations land grants Business transactions, development of central and western US uh, on uh, 1850 to 1870s. And then, uh, after which, uh, interstate commerce commission land grants, meaning they allowed to use land without yet what, uh, acquiring those properties okay? because of the demand. And the necessity. Okay. So maybe repay later on. Okay. So after uh, that, 1995 to 1996, Surface Transportation Board. Okay. And then uh, recent legislation, phase one, passenger trains, Amtrak. Is the name of passenger trains in the United States, Amtrak. I think uh, American, American transportation something, Amtrak, 1971. Phase 2, Pride. 1973, there are several regulations up to 1980s. Wherein they deregulated. Phase 3, multimodal. Okay. Multimodal, 1992. So there are several modes now. Okay. Not just passenger, private zone. So. All of the uh, functions related to transferring goods and services and uh, people 1992 and uh, year 2000 uh, safety improvements 2008 2010 surface transportation and stand up another uh, pace progress bigger freight train loads in the uh, United States there are six large North American freight train loads CSX and NS in Eastern, BNSF in the up in West, and CN and CP in Canada and Central US. Okay, so KCS is a medium sized railroad in Central US. Amtrak operates passenger trains primarily on freight railroad trackage throughout US. They, they uh, co use the truck of a freight, uh, and that is just okay because uh, human beings are lighter than cargo. So they uh, establish uh, the Amtrak company you know, to serve the movement of people passengers okay so these are the lines the railroad lines usually eastern blue lines okay western uh, yellow and uh, then uh, 
Canada and uh, Central US, uh, red and orange. Okay. So those are the usual green lights. Okay. Uh, specifically, we have a legend in the picture. For example, uh, orange Canadian National Railway. Burlington Northern. Uh, it is colored it's not green. Okay. And then the blue is uh, CSX transportation, which is the eastern. Okay, so those are the usual uh, type of and operators of train system. So North American flight transportation volume by mode. So rail, truck, pipelines, air, waterways, and air. So how many goods are being transported? So railway is the number one component. So railway is uh, about what? 40? About 40%. About 40%. Truck. It's about 30 or 20. Okay, truck is about 28 percent. Pipeline is uh, about 15 percent. And waterways about 12 percent. Okay, and air. Negligible. <laughs> Air transport is negligible. Okay. Because we are talking of freight transportation, meaning the goods, transporting the goods. And uh, about railroad tons. Transport. Coal. Okay. These are the commodities being transported using railway, almost transporting coal. Okay, so cheaper, cheaper transportation is railway because okay, you can uh, transport so many coal, volumes of coal. Uh, take note, foods and kindred products. Very small part. That is uh, food and kindred products. If you can see on the upper upper uh, pie, that is about what uh, five. Uh, that is about less than ten, no? About eight, something like that. About eight percent. It's about eight percent food transport. Okay. And uh, take note of coal about about forty eight or uh, almost fifty percent. So there are a lot of coal being transported. So for example here, oh, revenue meaning the the uh, income. Okay. 42.7% for the railroad. 42.7% revenue, sales, meaning your sales or uh, gross income, gross income. Revenue is gross income or gross sales, gross sales, 42.7%. For trucks, 30 or almost 31%. For uh, water and oil pipelines, they are uh, thirteen percent. Okay. Oil pipelines, water, they are thirteen percent, and airlines, point four percent, less than one percent. Uh, domestic air, okay, domestic airlines. So forty-two point seven percent for railways. So, even 
even higher percentages if we are talking of Japan. This uh, data are United States. If we are talking of Japan. The contribution, the the uh, requirement for railroads is even higher. US rail right traffic. Okay, take note of the traffic. 400 from year 1920. 400 uh, ton miles. 10 miles, billion time, 10 miles. Okay. 400 billion ton miles. And right now, after uh, 100 years, <laughs> after 100 years, it is about 1,800 billion or 1.8 trillion ton miles. Okay, so 400, how many times? So three times, four times. I think uh, right now about five times. This is a what? This is uh, the uh, the latest data here is 2008, and uh, right now this is year what? 2022. 2022. That's uh, after 100 years. No? Times five. The growth in five, uh, five times. Imagine. Okay. Fundamental principle of rail transport, therefore, efficiency. Implication for economics, energy, environment, or uh, why rail transport is more important than ever. So those are the reasons why we have uh, rail transport system as part of economic and development. So we will uh, continue with the next video. Uh, we'll stop here and if you have any comments, questions, questions, let us use our comment uh, section below. And, uh, see you on our next video. This is Dr. Ripi, Preaching Engineering Coordination Building.